Hey guys, Nerdking101 here, and today we are taking a break from our regularly, regularly scheduled programming to do something a bit different. Now, the original plan for this was for me to do a review, like a three-part series divided into Fate 1, Fate 2, and Fate 3, where I review every single Marvel movie. However, Due to some real life, due to between the surgeries I had earlier in the year, um, work, school, uh, the comic course I'm taking, and just life in general, trying to make other videos for you guys, free time, making time for friends, social life, all that, um, I just, I got to the point where, at, where the new Avengers movie, Avengers Endgame, was less than three months, was less than two months away. It was like 11 weeks away. And I had 21 movies to watch. I had only done the video up until Iron Man 2. Not even, I had only done it up to The Incredible Hulk. Yeah, I started it before my surgery, but then I was out of commission for like three months. And then I kind of just... Didn't get around to it. I'm busy. I had a lot of time getting back into the swing of things after like the three months that I wasn't uh, recovering, and after Christmas. And by the time it it rolled around until like February, and by the time the end game trailer dropped, when I'm like, I'll start working on it. I then googled it, and I was like, there's no way with the time I have, I can I can watch 21 movies in 11, in 11 weeks. Could I do it? Yeah. But the problem is, I would also need to watch it and film a review. So watching it takes two hours. Watching it and filming a review for it takes maybe seven hours. Like, well, it takes a two hour process, but the whole reviewing process, like reviewing it needed after watching it, that takes like seven, eight hours per movie. So I would basically need to do, need like to take dedicate seven or eight hours, multiple days a week, for eleven weeks. Like I would need to do to, to do to do this multiple times every week, and it just got to the point where I'm like, this is unrealistic. There's no way on earth I can do it. Like this is unrealistic. There's no way I can do it. So what I'd rather do is, I do want to do something. So I thought to myself, what could I do? Then I decided what I could do. I could sit down, and I could just do a video talking about my journey with the MCU. Because I am one of those people that have been there since day one. Like, I've literally, I've been there since Iron Man. So here, I have a list. This is, uh, I have it on notes on my phone. This is a list of every single Marvel movie, just to make sure I don't miss any. So I'm going to be going over my journey with these movies, how they informed me as a fan, and just talking of and rambling about this franchise that I love. Because the review thing isn't feasible, so I'd rather just do this big massive video. It's been being filmed a couple weeks prior, just to make, I want to make sure I get this done. So I'm filmed, so this is being filmed way prior to the release of Endgame. It is, uh, around the, it's March 30th, as of the recording of this video. This will be dropping, like, a week before Endgame, I would probably say. But I do want to say, the day before I see Endgame, which I'm gonna try to see it Thursday night. I don't know what I'll be doing then, but the, before I see Endgame, I will be doing a stream the day before. I'll probably do a stream the day before where I'm just like, it probably won't be long. It will probably just be me. Or before, before whatever it comes out in a uh, theater. It's like, you know, I don't want it to be, I don't want to be able to be full. But before the official version comes out, like before people start seeing it, before there's anything out about it, I will sit down and I'll do a stream predicting the movie and just talking and discussing it for like an hour. Like that's what I'll do. But let's get into the topic of this video, which is my journey with the MCU. I'm not going to go through the movies or 21, so we may be here a while, and talk about my journey with them. So, um, yeah. I'm going to start with Iron Man. So, first of all, let's go way back to before Iron Man and how I got into this genre. Um, when I was... 
But the earliest memories I really have of being invested in the superhero genre were looking at the women. I'm gonna tell the story in more detail, filling you in more later. But so when I was five years old, um, okay, no, so when I was a baby, you need to understand the full context, but when I was a baby, um, my tumor got so, was growing onto my spine, and I actually collapsed, I became paralyzed. And the only way to, they had to remove some of it, because there was no real medicine at the time. So to get to it, what they did was, they removed a part of my spinal cord, and went to the tumor and removed some of it. And I was fine, but they said to my mother then, that, that you know, this is gonna, this is probably gonna be a problem in a few years. Like, he's missing part of his spine, that's that bad. And then when I was six years old, when, yeah, when I was sick, yeah, when I was sick, my, I was at my grandparents' house. I was actually crying on. This was like, this was back in 2006. So some of you young people may not, some of you younger viewers may not remember this. But in 2006, they had these like glow in the dark pajamas that were like really cool. And I think it was around October, and they had gotten me, the, my grandparents had gotten me the really cool uh, glow in the dark pajamas. I, I, they were skeleton pajamas, they were really cool. And so we were walking, through, they were, you know, they were holding my hands and I was dead, and we were walking around in the house in the dark, and I had collapsed. And to be perfectly, just to make a long, long story short, but the whole incident went on for over a year. I became paralyzed, like, I couldn't move my arm, I couldn't move my leg. Eventually they tram I got transported, we were in Long Island, I got transported to Montesi or Hospital, where I had my last surgery, actually. And I got introduced to a, somebody named uh, Rick Abbott. Dr. Rick Abbott. And basically, long, complicated story short, what, it was, what they had to do was they had to put me in a halo. And what a halo is, is they, it's like, if you ever seen Dragon Ball, I mean a literal halo. Like, circle around the head. What they do is they have metal, they get basically, when you're really young, your ribs grow back. So they have a plan was to use my ribs to rebuild my spine. However, because I had gone so long, my spine like that, my spine was bent. So what they had to do was they had to uh, straighten my spine. They had to like keep me perfectly straight like this. Like I am right now. Like, perfectly straight, which is actually the reason you look. I can't turn my head because I'm fused this way. But they had to keep me perfectly straight for a couple of months. So they put me in what's called a halo, which is where they take screws and they have metal bars that they drill into your head. And it's over your head like this. And it's made of metal and it's a halo on top. And I, th I, mean, I think I saw some pictures somewhere, but they won't be in the video because I, would, I think they're drawing old physical pictures. They're not on the computer. But, um,. So basically what happened was I was paralyzed, like I could kind of walk, I couldn't really walk, I couldn't really do much. And it was like that for a couple months. Like, I, it, was, it was bad. But, so basically, traumatizing horrible spirit that I'll tell you, maybe I'll tell, if you like one I can tell you more about it in another video, but uh, maybe I'll talk about it on like a live stream in great detail one day or something. But basically the moral story is that I was out of the commission for a couple of months. And this was back when I had missed. I was a little too old. Like, I had missed on the, uh, like, the most of the DC animated stuff. Like, I had caught episodes of Justice League and, like, that. But that was later. I started catching that later. Like, I started catching the reruns on Cartoon Network a few years later. But then, like, I was, like, into Power Rangers. I was sick. I was more like Power Rangers and stuff. But I had caught reruns, uh, but I, I had, the only thing I had seen was a Teen Titans, the TV, which I didn't even really understand. Like, the only thing I knew then was that Robin was Batman's sidekick, and I was curious as to why Batman wasn't in the show. But, um, basically, what happened was I had literally nothing to do, and I had missed, so unfortunately, I didn't get, I, I saw the show until later. But I did not, I, I wasn't a 90s kid, I was born in 1999, so I missed, like, Batman the Animated Series, and, like, Superman the Animated I missed that, like, I, I, I saw the shows later, in, like, the late 2000s, 
mostly when they were doing reruns, like when they were like, re-airing the shows. Like, I call it, like, Static Shock, I call it, like, Batman the Animated Series, I call it The Batman Show, but they even connected to all that. I call it that later when I was into it. But, basically, what happened... This is gonna sound strange to you, but my early memories of a Super Friends cartoon. Because, obviously, my mom didn't know about, like, Batman the Animated Series. She wasn't keeping up with that stuff. But I was in the hot, well, I was, like... You know, like, everybody was like, how can we entertain this kid? Like, I, I wasn't even, I didn't know how to read at the time. I didn't learn how to read until I was, like, 12. I had learning disabilities, and I didn't learn how to read until I was, like, 13. But, based, nasty now, I would say 12, I would say 11, 12, I learned to read. But, the, 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 moral of the, the moral of the story is that people were like, what can I do all day? Be like, yeah, people would, like, play toys with me, but, like, I couldn't go to school, and I didn't really have friends. And I was home paralyzed, basically. I could kind of move my arms. Like, it was really hard, though. And basically, what ended up happening was my mother introduced me to the old Super Friends cartoon. And that was, like, my third official introduction to, like, the content of a superhero team. Like, Superman. That was my first official introduction to, like, there's Superman, or Batman, or Wonder Woman. Sadly. And I was sick, paralyzed, stuck at home for months. I thought it was awesome. Not as cool as Power Rangers stuff, mind you. Power Rangers was... Like, I was sick. But... Uh, so I saw that, and then my uncle was actually a big comic book One of my uncles was actually a big comic book fan. So I started getting into it, and he started introducing me like these, these like shows. And then I started keep finding the shows on Cartoon Network, and it slowly I started getting into it. Like I like I really liked this. I saw Spectacular Spider Man. I saw something about like old '90s show. Like I slowly but surely I started getting into it, and then what happened? But in 2008, I started hearing about this movie called Iron Man. And I was immediately like, who? Like, my only exposure to Iron Man was in the few episodes I saw of that crappy Avengers show. From the nine it rerun, the early 2000 Avengers show. Remember that? The one when Ant-Man was leading the Avengers? Remember Ant-Man, the leader of the Avengers? <laughs> like, nobody cared about Ant-Man, and I mean, I'm the leader of the Avengers for them to believe it. And, like, Iron Man, Thor, Captain America would show up in some episodes. They're, like, the founding members, but it wasn't about them. It was a really bad show. But, the, but you know, don't really go look it up. It's not. The only thing I like is the intro, because... It's been stuck in my head my entire life the way they it would just be the word Avenger repeated over repeated over and over again. But they said it really cool. It's like Avengers. 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 It was a really cool intro. But No, I was like, you mean the loser in the Arbor? That guy? You make a movie about Iron Man? Who is Iron Man? Isn't he some asshole in a suit of armor? Screw Iron Man! <laughs> like, I, I, was like, I, I was like, eight. I was like, who is Robert Downey Jr.? Who? Who is this guy? Like, he looks like an asshole. Like, isn't he like... Batman? Just lame? Like, who is this guy? Why are you making me with Iron Man guy? But, so I remember how, but somehow I ended up in theater. Watching Iron Man. Somehow that happened. Somehow. I'm not sure why, I'm not sure how, but that happened. I ended up in the theater watching Iron Man. And I loved it. I was immediately taken by Robert Downey Jr.'s performance. I think, like, everybody was. It was funny. He was funny. He was charismatic. He made me care about the character. And he just nailed it. He nailed it. I loved Iron Man. He immediately became my favorite superhero, which has changed now. My favorite just superhero overall is Batman, but like my favorite MCU character is Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. is fantastic in the role, 
and I was immediately taken. I was like, the, 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 Iron Man's awesome. I was like, holy shit. And I did not stay for the end credits scene. I specifically remember, I saw it on the DVD. We in our car, I think we were on our way to the doctors. And in our car, we had one of those DVD players, like you could put the DVD in and it would play. I just like, remember, we were, we were on that. I turned on, I put in Iron Man. Like, I have, like, the Iron Man. I don't have it anymore. I have, like, the Iron Man DVD. Yeah, I lost it. I do plan on collecting the MCU movie eventually. Maybe, maybe once I get, like, a job and I, I'll start saving up. And maybe, like, a gift to myself will be, like, the complete fake one, fake two, fake three collections of, like, internet all together. But maybe I'll do that. I don't know. But I put the DVD and I was watching it. And for some reason... I who couldn't read what's the credit. I think I liked the song. Like, I am Iron Man. Like, it reminded me of the opening to the 90s show, which is the only thing I like about that show, where it's like, I am Iron Man. Da 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 Yeah, it, it reminded me of that, so I listened to Black Sabbath. I didn't realize it was Black Sabbath, but I was listening to Black Sabbath, the uh, Iron Man. Like, I am Iron Man, and, um, basically what happened was I ended up staying for the credit. And, and I knew who the Avengers were. Like, I knew what the, the Avengers were. And then Sam Mills, yeah, the guy, the black guy who I did it, who I later realized, like, I was like, it's Sam Mills Jackson, who is awesome, um, showed up. And he was like, hi, I'm Sam Mills Jackson. And he, but he was like, my name is Nick Fury. And I have an all to you of these under initiative. And even at that age, I, I understood. You've been, you're now part of the bigger universe. Like, I, I got it. I was like, oh my god. I real like, I didn't have a full grasp on what they were doing because I was a kid. But I was like, the, the, he's gonna be other people. Like, he's gonna be other people. This is just freaking awesome. And then, I was, and then I kind of was like, meh, when's the next Iron Man? Because I was a kid, I didn't pay attention to news. I was like, I'll, I'll be watching my Power Rangers or whatever on Cartoon Network or my Stumbob. And I'll see a trailer, I'll be like, oh, me want to see, mom take me. Give me money so I can go see this movie. And you gotta drive me to the theater. So I'm, just, I'm, I'm like eight. Hey. But, so, uh, I saw Iron Man. And that's really the big one of the big story. I wanted to explain how I, what where my stance was at that point. Then, uh, then there was a little movie that no one really cared about called The Incredible Hulk, which sucks. Like, I, mean, I remember The Incredible Hulk was one of the movies I got around to rewatching when I was filming some of the reviews, and horrible movie. There's some good music. Edward Newert, New Newkit? Uh, what's, what's his name? Edward Newton? He's fine, I guess. Not very good, not great. But so I got around to watch. But I did not see that dude. My, I didn't know that movie existed. I didn't know who Hulk was. I saw a movie about a green rave monster. I was like, whatever. Who cares? I'm mon I don't watch monster movies. Mom was like, no, Hulk is cool. Let's watch the movie. And you know what? I've never seen it. Without that, we watched it. It sucked. <laughs> like, I, 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 all I remember is, like, we watched it. Like, I don't have any, any other memories about it. And I stick in my bedroom with my uncle, watching on my crappy, like, it was like a crappy, big, one of those old, big buff TVs, the one when you push it, like, made static -y noise. I wish I still had it. That's the, like, I have nostalgia for it, but it was like, when it, I had a TV in my room, like, one of those old, big, like, bigger than this, like, this big, really big TVs. And they're watching it on there, and I was like, screw this. That's not, I wasn't saying that, but I was like, I didn't have, like, I didn't have a critical thinking guild at the time to acknowledge that I didn't like it. Like, I didn't understand how I could be like, this thing, why this is bad. But I knew I don't remember anything about it that I enjoyed. So then, uh, that happens, and we, like, we walk the movie, and I was like, Okay, I didn't, I didn't even realize it was connected to the MCU because like they ignore it completely. But I for that one comment by uh, Bruce Banner, where he said I tried to put a bullet in my mouth. 
I also never understand, looking back on it, the things about Captain America and the ice. The whole thing is dumb, alright? The whole thing is dumb. It was also, but I did like, I did freak out at the end when Tony Stark, when Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark showed up. But, uh, and there's Iron Man 2, which I saw in theaters. Like, I liked the first. I went and I saw the second one. It was fine. I don't remember anything about it being spectacular. Because that was clearly back when Marvel was like, ooh, Iron Man. Yes, Iron Man made money. Like, they were treating it like normal movies like we make. One that made money, now we gotta make another one. Like, they were treating it more normally. Like, we gotta, you know, make sequels soon. Now they're like, what, you know, they did one Thor movie, Fade 1, one, one Fade 2, one Fade 3. Like, you know, the same with Captain America. Okay. No, the Iron Man 2 I saw, the other were fine. Then I saw Thor. I don't have great memory of these early, some of these earlier Marvel movies besides the Iron Man and Incredible Hulk for two reasons. One, they're bland and boring. Like, they suck. Like, they're just not very good. Like, Iron Man 2 is a fine movie, but I mean, it's like it's Iron Man 2. Yeah. Thor, I remember I saw that in theaters. Thor cool. Like, I, it, it would muck like, uh, Hulk, like, I just walked out of it, like, Thor, don't compare Thor for Incredible Hulk, I just think I walked out of it, like, cool, Thor, like, I was not on board the Thor train until Ragnarok, I'll say that now, but, not Thor, so Captain America, the first Avenger, which I like, but, like, Captain America, cool, I like underdog stories, I'm a massive Naruto fan, I like underdog stories, I like a good underdog story, if one of the reasons I'm not I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of the way Harry Potter is handled because I, I don't like like chosen one. I'm destined to say I don't, I don't. I've never been the biggest fan of those. But so Captain America: The First Avenger, I like this is dope. But I did not. I don't. What I did not do was this was before I really saved for end credit scenes. Like before, they were before because a writer was like, oh, they're going to need in every movie. You have to stay for this. <laughs> I didn't even probably realize that until I was like 15, 14 years old. But then, 2012, day one I thought in theater, The Avengers, I remember just being blown away. Like, I just remember being blown away. Like, I remember sitting there, because I hadn't been following it. I was like, The Avengers, this is where they all team up, right? Awesome. But I didn't realize, I didn't read comic books. I didn't realize, like, you, like, we, like, we, I had, no, I had never, it wasn't like now where I'm a cynical, jaded comic book fan who's like, the heroes are meeting. Oh, I guess we're gonna fight now, okay. I mean, you know, when a hero team up, not like they can fight bad guys, you know, they gotta fight each other. Like, now I'm like jaded, I'm like, ugh, because they do it all the time. But I was like, do I miss Thor? Like, Captain America were fighting, and it was awesome, and it was funny. I really liked, I was, especially when I was younger, and I didn't care about attention breakers. Like, where I was like, that cool, that funny. I was still 12. I was like, that's cool, that's funny. I still love Avengers, but I can go back, and it's still like my third favorite Marvel movie, but I can go back now, and I can be like, okay, Josh Whedon, cool it with your quippiness. Like, you gotta club a clip snout a little bit. But I mean, like, uh, I still remember, like, uh, well, my favorite thing when Captain Earth like, what's your plan? What's your plan of attack? And I, and Tony Stark is like, attack! And he jumped out of a plane. I'm like, that's so damn awesome! But that, I loved it. And that would go around when I start remembering some of the post credit scenes. Like, I remember sitting in the theater. I remember laughing at the swarm of the scene. And I, then I remember it cut. And I, and I remember, I don't read comment. He'd never been in anything before. But I remember a guy standing up and turning and smiling. And I didn't know who he was, but I was immediately intimidated. I was like, who is that? Then I kind of forgot about it. And then I kind of forgot about it until I kind of just slowly realized, oh, that Thanos does it all. Like, I kind of slowly, I slowly started to speak, I, I slowly, began. I didn't read comments at this point. I didn't jump into comments, like, big time until, like, 2015. I was like, this is that. That was around the time when I started wanting to know more, and I was like, so, around Civil War, I was like, 
Well, I wanted to know what the movie was based off of. Yeah, I was really interested. So I went and I watched the comic display video and I started reading the comic book run. Then I started just piecing Civil War together. And then I was like, so there was that time I was an alcoholic and I started just reading myself with random Marvel novels. And then recently, the past like year or so, I've been really getting into the deep and gritty of DC. Which I honestly think I enjoy more just because Marvel hasn't been doing well. But, uh,. Then Iron Man 3 came out, once again, I saw that in theater. I really remember really disliking Iron Man 3. As about just like a 15 year old ass, as a, no, uh, how old was I when 13 year old Ashton Chunky. I was like, well there's no, not enough Iron Man in the Iron, my Iron Man. Now of course I realize Iron Man 3 is actually about uh, a man dealing with post traumatic stress disorder and it's like an actual film. Like, with narrative, like, a uh, story, and last time I rewatched it, it was funny, it was fun. We got to see Robert, we got to see Tony Dark outside of the suit, which is actually, narratively, it's about critical thinking skills, really interesting. And I, I never, one of the movies you enjoy more when you're mature. Then there is one of the two Marvel movies I've met, Thor of the Dark World, which I ended up actually watching my grandparents now. My grandparents wanted to watch the movie. I was 12 and I was like, let's watch Thor. I don't know why I made them watch that. I feel bad. Thor sucks. Like, that's a horrible movie. They were back with Chris Hayward still dying in eyebrow blood to look like a complete asshole. <laughs> so, no, I mean, like, you know, like, it's it it ridiculous. But I, I was watching, I, that was meh. Then I saw Captain America Winter Soldier in a theater, and I was like, This is amazing. Like, that was it. I was like, This is cool. Then it acted, ironically, it's one of my favorite Marvel it, it is up there, one of my favorite like a Marvel that I really enjoy. The fight theme in Captain America Bucky actually inspired. My favorite, uh, one of my favorite Naruto fights, which is Dakura Haruno versus Jin Uchiha from Boruto. And you look at that total inspiration, that Dakura and, uh, there's a scene with Dakura punching Shin, and she flips Makunai, punches and he grabs the wall in the air. See, Chris Evans did the same thing in the movie with Fighting Bucky, like, you had your hand-to-hand -hand combat motions are pulled directly from, uh, Chris Evans and, uh, but, from, uh, Steve Rogers and Bucky Bar. They're great. But, um... Then there's the Garden of the Galaxy. The Garden of the Galaxy, Garden of the Galaxy is interesting. So I'm 14. And I get this call from my uncle. Telling me. About Garden of the Galaxy. And how the guy dancing. And he's describing it to me. I, I don't keep up with, like, trailers at this point. I still don't. I'm not... Uh, and ever I've learned to believe I'm a little behind on all that. And I... I haven't just fallen into it yet, I'm not there yet mentally, so I'm just, no, I'm not there yet, like, in fandom, I, I just, I'm a little behind, so, but, what, you're, what, we're telling my pictures and normally will be at that age, but, um, my uncle called me, he's like, you gotta see this movie, I was like, no, it's kind of, it's kind of stupid, and my cousin, one of my cousins, he was, like, into anime, and, like, he was way older than me, well, called Bob, um, my cousin Bob, um, cop shows up and he's like, hey, listen. He's like, me and my girlfriend are gonna go see a uh, garden of the galaxy. I think we're seeing a girlfriend. Me and a girlfriend were there. Me, my girlfriend, and my dad are gonna go see garden of the galaxy. He was visiting me. Right? like, I'm gonna go see garden of the galaxy. And you wanna come? And I was like, okay. We went. And I. And what? I'm 14, so I love, so I'm really immature, and I'm like, so I'm like, I remember I went home, I'm like, HE GOT MY DICK back in! And I'm like, like, hilarious. I was immediately like, I think I called my uncle and apologized. I was like, that was incredible. That was, that was a really good movie. So I, I was immediately like, all Guardians. So looking back, what Marvel did with the Guardians is astonishing. They took a team that... But not just, when I think nobody cared yet, I mean like, comic book reader 
don't care about the Guardian. And they made people care about the Guardian. It was astonishing what they did. They took nobody and made them somebody. It's astonishing. Although they're nothing like, but they're all, the Jane Gunn also altered the character a lot. Like, people are like, oh, I, I, like, Jane, like, uh, Star, like, Peter Quill and Gamora on my OTP. I'm like, I want to read the comic about them. Like, that's not a thing in the comic. They're just, I, I don't even think they're friends in the comic. Like, that's Jane Gunn. But then, we got it. Age of Ultron, Avengers 2. I was like, I was in. Then I saw it. And I definitely noticed a lack of, of something, uh, uh, not lacking, but I was getting older and I was definitely like, I don't think I liked that as much as I liked, um, the first one. I, I knew that. But I thought Vizzy was cool. I mean, there were cool moments when took up the hammer. I liked that. And then I went over that. And then there was the last Marvel movie that I didn't see in theater. Because this went around the time. Captain America Civil War was when I just fall in to like theory to like was when I was finally full in to like online fandom and talking to people and I wanna full into that. But the last one I didn't see in theater just was Ant Man because the marketing for Ant Man was really bad. Like I who at this point I wasn't fully into fandom, but I was like I, you know, I knew about the movie when they were happening at this point. And that man just, like, just, I didn't know it existed. Like, it was like weird being with Disney produce. I had some stuff going on in real life. Maybe I would just had too much going on. I was at my, I was at a, my old, old school, my old high school I went to, old, like middle school I went to, I being bullied. Maybe that would go on. Maybe I just missed it. But most people I talked about, like, just, I don't think it was very good promotion for it. But then, uh, Captain America Civil the War, which as I talked about earlier, but like, when I dumped, jumped full in. The story about Captain America Civil the War was fun, because I was trying, I, I, had, I was at a new school, and my mom wanted me to hang out with friends. So, but, you know, I was a special ed school, so they, so the parents wanted my mom to go with us, and went to the movie with us. I was like, okay, fine. Like, I could have done it by myself, but I mean, I had a friend, and learning disabilities and we were you know, we, we, it was, it was the, parent, the parents of the girl I was going with, it wasn't the day I was a friend, it was the girl I was going with, uh, they uh, were more uh, inclined, my mom went, so we, so we all went, uh, and we were fine, my mom, was like, my mom, was, you know, we were hanging out and talking, my mom, would, she, she was the one with the credit card and the money, she was buying the ticket, we were just hanging out, and uh, my, and my mom was hitting, You'll never believe what happened. My mom took us to the wrong theater. That is a thing that happened. Because the theater we went to had two theaters. One on one side, one on the other. The theater, they were both playing Civil War, but one of them was halfway through, and one of them had just started. So we walked in and the airport thing was playing, and I was like... I, I knew something was off. But I didn't want to say anything. I mean, I, to, I didn't think my mom would do that. So I, I, I honestly just thought, maybe it's like, maybe it's like a Naruto she put in episode one situation, like, we're, we're going to be like, we're fighting in the airport. How did this happen? But then we got, then the movie ended, and I was like, that was only an hour. Maybe less than an hour. Like an hour and ten minutes. Oh, wrong theater. So then what ended up happening was, I was asking my grandparents, and they wanted to see a movie, and not a bunch of new ones to see, and I was like, I want to see Civil War. And they were like, okay, and then I went with my grandmother, and, we, and I saw Civil War, and I loved it. Great movie. Awesome final fight, great special effect. I liked the approval. And it was like, the Sokovia Accord, not like the superhero registration act, are stupid. Because the Avengers were responsible for one of those incidents. The Avengers made one mistake. The alien invasion was them saving the world. Alright? The code. The, the event at the, in the beginning of that movie was also not their fault. So that I didn't like. But then again, I got a big fan to review and registration that. 
Mostly because we never get to actually see the act. Which I think really, I think if they like released it online and let us read it, that would make a big difference. Sorry, I'm a little stuffed up right now. But uh, then Doctor Strange came out, which I saw in theaters. I really liked it. The thing about Doctor Strange is that I felt like Doctor Strange was a very in inmate, inmate personal story, and I, uh, I really liked that. Then, uh, man, you know, with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, which blew me away. Because at this point, I was super involved in, like, the MCU and the how Disney worked. And I was like, did this get killed, Yondu? I was like, really? Awesome! I was happy. You know, I knew Infinity War was coming, and I knew what Infinity War was. And I was like, they have to get to do it. Like, that gave me hope. I was like, is Thanos actually going to defeat the Avengers? Um, after that, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming came out, which I was so hyped for. Because I loved Spider-Man. And when he showed up in Civil War, I lost my... I remember actually watching the trailer for Civil War. I was on my way to Washington, D.C. Which, after the recording of this video, I'm actually leaving on Tuesday to go there for medical stuff. And I remember being sitting on the train. Well, if the train had Wi-Fi, jumping up and almost and screaming. And my mom was like, my mom and grandmother were like, what the hell? Like, you're on a train. And then I was just like, like, the eyes were squinting, like, in the cartoons and the comic. Like, his eyes were squinting, and he was quippy, and he was, like, on the roof, and he was making crypt, and he had the shield and the costume, and I was just like, yeah! Like, the Spider-Man fanboy. I mean, Spider-Man had always been, like, I've always liked Spider-Man. Like, I don't know if they were anything new character, but, like, Spider-Man was, like, my favorite Marvel character. Like, in general, like, comic book-wise, Spider-Man was, like, Spider-Man's awesome. I loved the concept of Spider-Man. I used to, I, I saw all the movies when I was really young. Um, I used to try to get my mom to get me, like, and if you remember those, like, big thing you would put on your wrist and you would go like this and you would shoot what I think like that was me I love I, I always liked Spider-Man but I didn't really the reason I mentioned earlier because I didn't really register that Spider-Man was a superhero I find that was just a guy like a hero like a find that was a character I liked like he was it was like Power Rangers and stuff but okay I remember I walked I, I remember sitting in the theater I remember what theater of that I'm not gonna tell I was at a theater, I was at a theater, and I wanted to stay around Chelsea, in New York City, I used to live there, but I, used, I went to school in Chelsea, in New York City, I don't live there anymore, so I don't mind telling you that, but then I was at a theater near my apartment, I remember look, and I remember, do, 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 I knew the class of 50 name playing. And I started clapping. I was like, yeah! He's home. Spider-Man is home. And I lost my shit. I was so happy. Uh, then uh, my mom, who is a superhero fan, went with me. She refused to go to see Spider-Man. I, like, I was trying to get her to see it for years. She, because she liked the movie, too. And I'm like, you should come see Spider-Man. You know? She's like, no. Done with Spider-Man. She wanted to know people. I was like, nah. Like, make way too many Spider-Man movies. But then I, uh, we, we, I met my mom, she saw Ragnarok, because she kind of liked the third of the movie, because we were like, the time, we were like, the time to look good. And we know what we want, we thought, I was like, I'm gonna go see it, I have a, for some reason, I wanted to see Thor Ragnarok, and I was like, oh, yeah, I never saw the trailer, and I was like, oh, they're doing Planet Hulk, I'm in. I was like, they're doing Planet Hulk. Because I, at that point, I understood that, like, they couldn't make a Hulk solo movie due to the Universal deal. <laughs> and I was like, they're using Thor, a Thor movie that excuse you apply to Hulk, I'm in. Which isn't really what they did, but it still worked. So, uh, we went, and we both looked. Like, Thor Ragnarok is amazing. It's not one of my favorite Marvel movies, but it, like, it's amazing what was happening. They took Thor, who nobody liked. And made him one of my favorite Marvel. And made him one of mine and many people's favorite Marvel cinematic universe character. Like, Thor is a clown. Thor is not a clown in the comics. In the movie, he's a clown and it works. Because what they had before didn't work and it sucked. So we were like, this is stupid. 
Sorry, stupid. Let's embrace that and have fun as they did, and it was great. Then I went to the theater, but I saw Black Panther, which I have a review of on this channel, actually, so I'm not going to go into super great detail. I like it fine. I like the dialogue was a little off at times. The CGI could have been better. But usable complaints, Black Panther. Yes, I understand it. Cultural significance. And it's definitely a really good movie. Like, that's a great villain. I definitely think uh, it deserves an Oscar. Killmonger is the second best villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe next to, of course, Thanos, who did nothing wrong. Because I, did, because I believe now and always, Thanos did nothing wrong. I'm kidding, of course. But that movie was that movie was great. Um, great movie. And then, of course, the big one, which is also on the channel, like all the Marvel movies are. Well, that had come out since the channel was started. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, not Ant-Man, Avengers Infinity. <laughs> I guess the big one, Avengers Infinity War, which is the only movie I've ever seen more than once in theater. I've never done it before. I saw Avengers Infinity War three times in theater. And, and I don't think, like, I don't need to put it into, I don't, I don't need to put it into the war. Like, it's Infinity War. <coughs> and what can I say about this movie that has already been said? It's a really good movie. What can I say about it that hasn't been that? It, 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 it's amazing. Um, Ant-Man and the... And, remember Ant-Man and the Wasp, which I also reviewed on the channel? Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp's been good. Well, I, it's been a while since I've seen it. Like, I don't have a good memory of it. It's fun. It's a comedy. I like that it takes place during Infinity War and it's playing where Ant-Man was. I also like that it shows uh, how and all been getting dusted, and it's clearly the ending plays a role into Infinity War. I'm going to be interested in seeing where that goes. But, I mean, it's, it's been such a journey. And it, it, like, yeah, anime has helped me, but this has really helped me for fandom. It connected me to the comic book YouTube community, which really informed how I, a lot of those people are a lot of influence in how I do the channel. Like, comment, uh, definitely, uh, Comic story and his, his comic story and comic pop are big inspiration production wise. Like, you know, production wise, like the idea of doing shows. Like, I never thought of doing like series of like formatting something like a show. Like, I thought of doing series of discussions, a la like Roger Base, Mother Basement, but I never thought of like. Standing in front of a camera with a green screen, with an intro, a concept, with guests, and having a show, like like a podcast-style show, which is really what I'm aspiring to now. So that really informed the channel. It also informed me on, like, fandom in a lot of ways. Like, and, like, they really informed, like, in, like, at, and, like, to talking with writers on Twitter. Like, you know, getting information, Reddit. There were a, a question and answer on Reddit. Like, the comic can really inform my more normal fandom sense. Like, anime and manga are a very different community because it's, it's from a different country. That's it really would inform but my normal sense of internet fandom, internet production. And it, it's all important to me, but above all else, the movies made me a Marvel fan, which is also. And I love these movies. Like, these, like, this is not just. Something I watch. These movies mean something to me. Like, I am going to see Endgame. I, like, unless I may be on a trip for uh, Easter, but even then, I'm going to try to see Endgame opening night because I hear the crowd is different. And, and, and if I'm being completely honest with you, uh, if I'm being completely honest with you, hold on, I got to pull my left back up. If I'm being completely honest with you, I'm. Um, the movies made, one made me a Marvel fan, but they're also the something that I've been basically doing with two, with a section of two movies that I've been seeing within, within at least three days of release, mostly day of release, or two or three days after they were released, since 2008. These movies are part of my life. There's something I do with the tradition. I go, I see them, I laugh, I cry, I've cried a few times. I I almost cried. Okay. I would have cried in Infinity War, but my mother spoiled it for me. It's basically what she said. Because 
It just wasn't her fault. She didn't realize, and she doesn't know anything about the comics, so she didn't realize what she was doing. But she got spoiled, like, early in the morning. I was like, you know, Twitter, you know, Facebook, you know, YouTube, I was like, I had all, I had like, every single word blocked on my phone. Because I, I had a feeling the snap would happen, but I wasn't sure because Disney. And my mother told me, you're going to be sad at the end. And I, was, and I never said it, but I knew in my, when it happened, I was like, Around the end of the movie, I started saying she'd get a snap. Like, I kind of knew. Because I was basically like, well, that's what happened in the comic. Like, she snapped his finger. Like, so when she said, you're going to be so really, really upset, I kind of, you know, subconsciously put two and two together. So I wasn't that shocked, but it was still a great movie. But, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe means something to me, and I cannot wait to talk about Endgame. Um, I'll talk about more of what I do and don't want when I do like my live stream and game ramble, which I'm going to try to figure out how to do it with the green screen. Like I want that to be a really good looking video. It's not just me sitting in front of a camera. I want it to be good. Also, you have to tell me how you're liking this. I because this is actually like well actually don't tell me because you'll see other videos like this. Is it as of the production of this video, I've only done one or two videos in this style yet, so I'm still... I hope you guys like it. If you don't, the only reason this is like the style is because uh, they were filmed way in advance, way prior to Endgame. Because I wanted, I wanted to have this ready, and I'm, when, and I'm not sure when I'm going to have time to film a video this long, and this just... I have a three day weekend, and I really, this weekend, I really wanted to crack down and get some videos done. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, for, I would just like to, I'm gonna do it at the end of the, I'm gonna do like an official thank you list in that video. But the people I'd like to thank are, first of all, of course, Steve Ditko, Jack Kirby, Sam Lee, who really created most of these characters. Uh, who else do we want to thank? We want to thank, of course, we want to do okay, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Scarlett Johansson, Tom Peterson, I believe, and Tom Hiddleston. We're going to put a big, 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 this momentous thing. Kevin Feige is the man. He's the man, he's the man, he's the, man. He's the, he's the eye on the wall. Kevin Feige is the man on the wall, the man who made it all possible. So thank you to Kevin Feige. Um, this was just me talking about my journey with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sorry for the minimal editing. I decided to bust down the camera. This is really what I'm going to be going for for a longer. Just this is kind of a method I'm go I'm going for with uh longer shows that aren't like that aren't like an analytical. The things like this, I feel this kind of setup works better than me just putting pictures on screen instead of spending like a week editing this video. I'm like. I'll just do something simple like this, because it's analytical, because this is just a fun video. This is something I want to spend over a month making, putting pitch and editing, when I can just have fun with it. So, okay, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and what else, guys? Tell me what you think of the MCU, what it means to you, what, have you had a journey with it, or are you just a casual viewer and you're hardcore? Tell me what, what you're hoping to see in Endgame, and, uh, and all that in the comments that's in down below. Be on the lookout for my event, my pre end game live stream, which will be coming out at some point, which we'll be doing at some point before I think end game, probably one or two days. I'll be completely avoiding spoilers, of course. Don't spoil me, please. For a bubble else, guys, um, have a great day. Like the video if you enjoy, tell me your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe for more videos. And also, a bubble elf guy. You can follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below. And a bubble elf guy is also will also be appearing here on screen. And a bubble elf guy, have a great day. Nerking World One, signing out.